Today's show is brought to you by AdamandEve.com. Go to AdamandEve.com right now and you'll get 50% off just about any item. All you have to do is enter the code word GLORY, G-L-O-R-Y, at checkout. Be advised that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live from Glory Hole Studios and beyond, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome mat. This is episode 563 or thereabouts, and we are joined today by No Illusions. Noah, I, I was thinking about when the hell were the, when were you on the show last, man? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a long Gosh, it's while. Like 500 or something. God yeah. damn. Yeah. <laughs> right, dude, right? I can't believe we held it yeah. off this long. That's the part yeah, I'm yeah. proud of. Like, that's the, that's really what I'm trying to, <laughs> it's, trying to emphasize. It's, yeah, no, it's it's a new personal best for me. I've been away from you guys for, <laughs> I mean, you know, other than the, other than the once a week that we get together yeah, over on the other time. Near, yeah. The other time we get now, together. Be, no, before uh, we start, did you get your complimentary share of GameStop before? But we, it's for yeah. all our guests. We get them one, <laughs> one share <Yeah>. of GameStop. <laughs> Um, and nitroglycerin. I'm not sure which is more volatile. You but know, we get, I'll we tell get you, you I, both. I, I, sh- I shorted it about a week ago. It's going great. I think I'm starting my own hedge fund. <laughs> what is it? What oh. did it fall to today? I saw today that it fell. Yeah, down to 50. Ooh, yeah. what? That's a rough go if you bought at 300. <laughs> right. Man. Now all the rich oh. people are. Still rich. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah nothing yeah, happened still there. Rich. Yeah, we yeah. sent a message to them. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, did not. No, the the reason we had you on is because we know you're a prolific writer, and you just finished a book last year, late last year, and uh, and we wanted to hear about it, and we wanted to talk to you about it. The book is called Outbreak: A Crisis of Faith. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the inspiration. Why did you write this book? Well, yeah. So our our fear at the time was, boy, can we can we get a book about the pandemic out while it's still relevant? Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, one word a day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, but the honest. So as we were looking at it, my, myself, I, I would say we had myself, uh, Heath Enright, Eli Bosnick, and Andrew Torres. We all worked kind of together. Uh, outlining the book, and it was sort of an inspiration that that my partner Eli had. That um, you know, I I was just a, a eventually tasked with wording in, in in uh, in his term. Um, <laughs> but oh, I got this great idea! I got this great idea. Please dedicate several months of your life to it. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that the pitch? <laughs> right. Well, that was that was basically it. Yeah. Right. So, the, our fear though was because we, of course, you know, we do basically the same thing on scathing atheists that you guys do here. We cover all of the shit that's in the news, and, and with a specific focus on atheist news or news that's that's relevant to skeptics. And of course, for that period from let's say you know March or so of last year to today. All of those news items are about the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, and it occurred to us that, like, in the future, when the story is told of the pandemic, it's going to be, you, normally, you have to kind of go out of your way to find the historical scapegoat. You have to kind of guess, gee, I wonder who the scapegoat for this is going to be. You know, we know who the scapegoat's <laughs> going to be for this one. <laughs> right? We had a volunteer yeah, yeah, yeah. from the very beginning. Um, and my fear is because Trump was so obviously at fault for so much of the stuff that went wrong, the, the larger role played by religion and more specifically by cultural deference to religion might ultimately get ignored. Uh, so the book itself, the, the main body of the book was written in a three week period, right as the nation kind of entered that quasi national lockdown that we did right before Easter. I like and, to think of it as the lockdown. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
Um, so, but it, and and it really it chronicled exactly all of the ways that we saw religion standing in the way of a science based response. Now that comes down to like you know look the religious people had spent uh, decades trying to get people elected based on how they felt about you know clumps of cells in uteruses yeah, rather yeah, than right. how qualified they were to do their jobs. Oh, are you talking about people, Noah? Those are people <laughs> <laughs> with heartbeats. It's just, yeah. So, Noah, so, your, your book's title um, is A Crisis of Faith, How Religion Ruined Our Global Pandemic. And I like that because it, it sort of implies that like without religion, this would have been so much more enjoyable as a pandemic. <laughs> it would have been amazing. It would have been like, man... <laughs> I am really glad we were able to enjoy this pandemic and religion didn't sneak up and fuck with it. But I, 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 you know, I'm not a, I'm not a hugger, Tom. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, people get all touchy and shit. I love having this. I have not had to do a family thing for a year. Uh, I got all the way through the holidays without having to do the family. Sh I mean, you know, there's, there's yeah, this some is your favorite. You're this. living your best life right now. <laughs> It is the introvert's dream right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. If it wasn't for the hundreds of thousands of people dying. Yeah. Right. Well, that, yeah, that, I guess. Well, see, you're living yeah. your best life. Right. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not. Like, I would a, think, like, as a misanthrope and an introvert, this is like, this is your <laughs> peanut butter and chocolate moment. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's funny is I'm and I'm seeing this increasingly in the memes and shit is that people like me are finally starting to crack, right? It took 300 or whatever days, however the hell long it's been. And I've, I've been hardcore locked down, right? I, I do the podcasting thing as a full-time job, so I don't have to go anywhere uh, job-wise. I can work from home. Uh, my wife does the shopping. I, with the exception of occasionally taking my father-in-law back and forth to doctor's appointments and a couple of trips to help a friend who needs a ride, um, I haven't left the house in, you know, nearly a year at this point. Um, oh. And it's just starting to get to me. I'm just starting to get to where I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to play video games tonight, again tonight. <laughs> Man, I was in a fucking uh, full-blown existential panic, like, as soon as, like, it hit Wuhan. Like I right, like I read yeah. I read a New York Times article about it and I was like, I want to go out. Like, can we go out? I feel like we should go out. <laughs> no, I feel terrible for people like because look, I could not be set up better for this, right? Like this is like I, I if I had known the damn thing was coming and had a year to prepare, with the exception of more toilet paper, you know, the be portioned out over time. I don't know that I could have done much better with it because, like, I, I you know, like I said, I have a job where I don't have to go anywhere. I live somewhere where the weather is warm. And I'm in a fairly rural area. I have like a separate apartment where I work that's like a, it's like a mother-in-law apartment on on top of my house so i can actually be away from my wife she can be away from me a little bit so we're not like constantly sitting in each other's laps and i have a lot of like you know keeping to myself type hobbies i'm a musician i'm a voracious reader i like to write obviously um and if it's getting hard on me i can i can't even imagine what it's like on people like you man <laughs> People it's not been like my best human life. Interaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, re it really hasn't. So back back to your book, though. Um, so religion, I mean, I think that's 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 a piece of the puzzle that, like, to your point, we're not talking about that piece very often. So how did religion prime us to have like this? I think we can agree optimally bad experience <laughs> as a <laughs> pandemic goes. We sort of optimized all the worst fears of this right. pandemic. So how was, how, what, what role did religion play in that? Well, you know, we, we already talked a little bit about the way that they gave us bad leaders and, and let's, you know, look, I, we already said Trump deserves a lot of blame. Well, religion de deserves a lot of blame for Trump, right? They, they, they were, yeah. his uh, I believe you're pronouncing boosters. Cyrus wrong. That's weird. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a whole thing. So. But, you know, so so it started off by giving us bad leaders who are underqualified for their position, especially in positions that were related to science. That has been a bugaboo for yes. religion for a very, very long time for obvious reasons. Right. Anybody who deals in concrete reality is going to butt up against religion a lot. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, I don't I just push back a little bit on that. I mean, Rick Perry 
Uh, <laughs> now, he, he, was, <laughs> he was the energy you secretary. You can't even do it without laughing. You can't even get yeah, he there. Was, I, he was the head of the department of, uh, uh, what's the... Uh, sh- what's what's the, the, uh, one, it's uh, not uh, the uh, education. Uh, it's, um, Sarah, did you write it on your uh, hand? Yeah, you probably wrote it on your head. It's the one amazing. that, I don't know, yeah. Sarah knows about it. Don't oh, look at Jesus. your business cards. Stop. Stop. <laughs> but I mean, he has, he's got a degree in animal husbandry, and that's like <laughs> science. And that's very much like nuclear energy. Really so I don't know. Less. Like those things, that's, yeah, obviously missed the boat on that one. So, yeah, so it starts off with that. And, and then also let's talk about like a little bit about the demonization of science that's that's going along with it. Right. Biology is is evil. Biology is a is a science that's being used by the devil to draw people away from the word of of Jesus because evolution is inconvenient to him. Well, gee, you know, let's hope nothing comes up. We're having demonized biology for the last couple of decades fucks things up. Right. You have the distrust of science. You have the, the 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 piss poor leaders, and then on top of all of that, when the pandemic hits, you have all of these greedy, grifty ass pastors that come out. And you know, look, yeah, sure, there were a lot of churches uh, that shut down. There are also a lot of churches that didn't shut down, where they came out and they said, "No, you are protected by the blood of Jesus." Some such and such, no plague shall touch your house or whatever the hell it is. You're just fine. Keep giving me money. Keep showing up. Jesus would never give you a, a a disease for going to church right and then on top of that you've even got these guys like uh uh what's his name the um the guy who with the oily hands that spit on everybody to cure the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> kenneth copeland kenneth copeland yeah Rich, uh, richest oily, fucking pastor in america how did i right? get that how did i get that you had how so did I many choices that? to be right I that's did. why I, I felt i feel like i feel like i don't know like we communicated that ahead of time or something because i could how did i get that out of just what you said that's amazing anyway yeah no he did the whole there was a whole remix of him like blowing COVID away going and yep, like yep, it was amazing. Holy it was wind. absolutely outstanding. And he had the yeah. thing, he did the thing where like touch my hand through your TV screen and, and your yeah. COVID will be Oh cured. yeah, he had the whole, yes, yes. Yep, he had that the was whole him? holy hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like seriously, yeah. short of like encouraging people to flick their boogers at people, like he couldn't do anything <laughs> more. Right, touch my hand <laughs> and let me blow on you? Are right. you fucking yeah. kidding me? Uh <laughs> <laughs> I read somewhere there was a great a great line going around. They're talking about uh, remember when we all used to stand around and it was somebody's birthday and they would blow <laughs> on a cake and we would eat it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is so, so, <laughs> we had so a birthday amazing. like almost immediately after like the lockdown and everything yeah. with with a friend and it was that it was a COVID birthday, right? And we we thought about that immediately afterwards. We're like. That's kind of oh. fucked up that we ever did that. Wow, <laughs> wow that's <laughs> fucking crazy. The, clearly, the the televangelists were were a huge problem. But did you see? Did you see any of the main? Were there problems with like mainstream? You know, because because it's easy to point to all the the Catholic or not the Catholics. It's easy to point to all the the evangelicals because they do crazy shit all the time. So whether it's a pandemic or it's not a pandemic, they're going to do something crazy and stupid. Did you see mainstream religion at all pushing back on any of the COVID stuff that was going on, trying to break any of the lockdown stuff that they had put forth? Well, so let's, first of all, let's be clear that evangelical Christianity is the most mainstream of mainstream. You know what? Right? I, I, I will is take that really? correction. Thank you, Notice. No, they, that is absolutely true. You're absolutely right. There's more Ugh. evangelicals in this country, I think, than anything else. I think really? you're right. I, I, yeah. I, I, be, I, I believe so. And, but, but, you Ugh. know, you have to... So evangelical isn't... You know, it's not a really a definitive category. It means white Baptisty Protestanty guy or gal, <laughs> right? Um, so it's it, yeah, but but I it, you know so but yes, the, the 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 answer to the question that you're asking though, uh, you know, with with, with all of the um, the caveats. Is yes, absolutely, man. I saw the Pope giving dangerous fucking shit or, or saying dangerous shit about the uh, pandemic, talking about how it's God's revenge for us not. Um, taking good care of the environment. Now, yeah. what? Yeah, no, I get that. No, so he he couched it in some terms that made it sound slightly less medieval, right? But but he sort of couched it in that in in that terminology which I get the idea of you know trying to link these types of problems, but still the idea that this is God's vengeance is a little problematic. 
right? In the modern <laughs> yeah. day. But the other yeah. important thing is like you're saying, or, or uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put uh, words in your mouth, but I think like you're implying, even where they're not directly espousing these dangerous beliefs, they're often not pushing back against them either. Yeah. Right. I see survey after survey now showing these, uh, the, you know, the, the prevalence of uh, conspiracy theories about the vaccines and stuff within churches. And I see remarkably few, you know, Christian organizations coming out and, and, and wholeheartedly throwing their endorsement or, uh, behind, you know, the, the evil Bill Gates 666 vaccine. This is such a horrifying missed opportunity. I mean, I don't I don't even mean this facetiously for religion, right? Because they they have an opportunity to step up and turn all their churches into vaccination centers and like they they have they have a real opportunity to perform the social good function that they always tell us that they are yeah. there to perform. So if you listen to them, they're always telling you, "Yeah, I don't pay taxes because at the end of the day, churches are a social good. We provide these amazing services um, which they don't, but that's, that's the reason for their tax exempt status in broad philosophical terms, right? But th this this was this great opportunity for them to step the fuck up and prove their value to us, right? They have such sway, such influence. They're authority figures over, you know, hundreds of people at a time, maybe thousands, depending on the size of a congregation. And and the absolute lack of, of responsible leadership from the religious community is, I mean, it's, they could have just, they could have helped. They right. like, I, and I would have been, I would have been not even begrudging about it, right? Like if, if the churches had turned over in mass, their buildings and their resources and their infrastructure, some of which is pretty substantial um, to the vaccination effort, to housing the homeless in responsible ways so that the homeless people, you know, have, places to stay that are socially like mm -hmm. they, they, they had an opportunity to really do the thing that they were supposed to do. And rather than do that, they fucked the whole thing over. They right. fucked they, the they, whole thing sideways. Right. If they had done nothing, it would have been better than what they did. Yeah. Right. That, that not only did they fail to, to step up to the plate, but they actually actively hindered the effort all along the way. Instead of stepping up to the plate to try to help, they sued their governors, right? For, for, for refusing to let them gather together. If the, if the governors were Democrats, you know, it, it, it also strikes me that like one of the things that religion does is religion requires that everything have a consequential explanation, meaning like this happened because of that mm -hmm. rather than this just happens. Like we live in a world that, you know, chaotic shit happens, viruses appear. Okay. That's just that's just part of living in a world, is the world. But everything has to have a a if this then that moral consequence, you know? And that insistence on that moral consequence pushes people's thoughts to, well, if the result is if, if the result is COVID. And the cause was, you know, homosexuality or whatever they're blaming it on. Then to fix COVID, we fix homosexuality. Right. Rather than and give everybody a fucking vaccine at church. Again, like their whole, their whole mission, they could have really done some good here. Well, and that's really the whole point that, that I was hoping to make with the book is that this is inevitable. Right. Like it, 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 as soon as you have religion, you create this instance, because like you said, they have to they, in order for there to be a God, in order for there to be a loving God who's out here killing off. We, we, we're, we're at like two and a half million people worldwide at this point. We're yeah. higher. It's higher yeah. than that. It'll be higher than that by the time this goes to air. Uh, so, you know, in order to have that loving God, like you said, you have to have some excuse. It has to be because we've fallen from his ways, because we ignored him, because we didn't do this, because we didn't do that. So no matter what, as soon as you allow anything at all to compete with observable fact, you know, when when the question is, what should we do about the deadly disease that's going on or whatever the next thing that, that we actually need science to help us with is, as soon as you allow us anything to compete with truth on that, you, you, you've created a situation where inevitably you're going to have, if not a situation as bad as the one we had with the, the pandemic, at least one that is suboptimal to the degree to which you are religious, or to which your society uh, indulges the religious. Did religion benefit from the pandemic? Will religion come out stronger? 
Well, I saw a survey from Pew uh, that came out, I believe, just a couple of days ago that said some 28 percent of Americans said that their their faith was strengthened by the pandemic. The you know, proof oh. that there is not an omnibenevolent, <laughs> omnipotent Jesus. being at the helm. How the fuck? Like, how the fuck is is 400 plus thousand dead people? Like in yeah, our well, country alone, yeah, that, that does seem like what a loving God would do. Well, well I mean, I, I I've am, read the Bible. It sounds like their God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds exactly like what he'd do. I mean, right, it doesn't yeah. sound. It sounds on brand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. On brand. I guess. I guess you're right. It's just that, like, there's 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 a falsehood that God is is benevolent, right? And yeah, that, and that's nonsense yeah. if you if you read the Bible. Yeah. But you guys know it more than most Christians know it. So yeah, well, right. Yeah, I I I want to ask so. In, in general, it's it's the evangelicals who really we should thank for four years of Trump. The evangelicals were the ones who came out and voted for him en masse, and they were the ones who pushed him. And then they were the, also the ones who excused every single thing yep. he did for four straight years. So did they try to downplay it because of Trump? And I feel like there is some sort, there's got to be some sort of connection there. Yeah, well, I, you know, look, I mean, I think one way or the other, the it, 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 all of their incentives lined up neatly for that. Right. Right, like we, we, whether it was entirely for Trump or whether it was partly because, you know, it's a little hard to explain the loving God around this, you know, or whatever it was, or whether it's just because they wanted people sitting in the damn pews because people don't show up at church if there aren't other people to notice them be there. <laughs> right. Um, you, you know, like there was a huge drop off in, in church attendance when people were asked to do it online. So, uh, you know, it's funny how yeah, cognitive yeah. dissonance doesn't have that problem. You don't have to, you know, <laughs> yeah. guilt anybody into showing up to listen to your fucking show. You just make a good yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, so and it, and it works, but that doesn't work with church. Uh, so, you know, like they had a number of incentives <laughs> show up. So that's amazing that it's true. You're absolutely right. And it never occurred to me. The reason why is because if nobody's watching me to go, then why the fuck would I be there? Right. And they, that's I, I guess it never occurred to me, but I guess I really didn't know that they that there was huge drop offs. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, you know, like most of these mega churches, especially, but even moderately large churches already have the ability to stream their services online because you've got. You know, yeah, come on, you're milking the the, the indigent, the hardest, or, or sorry, you're, you're milking the, the people who are, you know, at death's door who can't get out and, and, and go to your church the hardest because you want them to leave stuff to you in their wills. So they, they have the ability Ugh. to broadcast, um, you know, to, all, to you know, online and, and use all of these various services long before this pandemic ever hit. They could all, you know, virtually all do that. Hell, we did it. I mean, you know, you did it. You, you do like, like, it's not like there's a huge barrier to broadcast at this point. No, technology has, has democratized this quite a bit, actually. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. even the churches that weren't already set up to do that could still do exactly that if the goal was to actually get the word out of God out there and get this. But it was to get the collection plate in your hand. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you put all of these things together, you know, this whole like, it, you know, kind of hard on your on your theology. It's kind of hard on your politics. It's kind of hard on your wallet. And, and what are they? You know, obviously, they're going to do what's in their best interest. And once again, as a society, because we're so deferent to religion, because we're like, well, everybody has the right to believe what they want to believe, even if it's demonstrably false. You know, we, 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 we put ourselves in a position where this is inevitable. This is going to happen. And it's not, again, you know, Trump is gone, so it won't happen as bad. But the next bad thing that comes where we need science to, you know, rush into the rescue it's, it's, there's going to be a huge contingent. There's going to be the Marjorie Taylor Green contingent yep. that's oh, also Christ. getting a vote on that. That's also dragging down any effort that we make to, or that we have to uh, to fix the problem. And very often that person might be, you know, in the halls of power but neutered. But very often that person's going to be the goddamn governor or on the Supreme yep. Court. You know, you you said something I, w I want to ask you about. So like. You know, we fetishize this bullshit idea that there's a right to believe nonsense that should not be questioned. That that's that's not only not to be questioned, but really is is to be cherished. Our right to believe complete and utter bullshit is a right Americans uniquely cherish. And I I wonder about your thoughts on how that right to believe bullshit unencumbered by facts or pushback helped to push the disinformation campaigns or primed us for the disinformation campaigns that 
like really like exacerbated this crisis. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at the it, 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 it's because of Donald Trump's you know the way that 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 he treated the truth. I think the media had already learned a couple of very very hard lessons about indulging in bullshit. Um and 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 giving bullshit equal time. They they made that mistake all through the 2016 campaign. They they basically hand delivered the presidency to Trump because of it. Uh, they they continued to make that mistake over and over again for the first couple of years of his presidency. And so, to a greater degree than I think at any other time point in my lifetime, the media did seem to know not to give maybe hydroxychloroquine will do the trick equal time during the pandemic. But regardless, the, the extent to which they were able to be definitive on that uh, is, is, is hampered by exactly that tendency you're talking about. Even, you know, onto the, right now, like where I get, and I'm sure you guys do too, I get messages from people saying, you know, like, well, uh, Twitter shouldn't be allowed to ban Trump because X, Y, and Z. And again, it, it, because, and that all boils back down to that, well, he should be able to believe whatever the hell he wants kind of a, kind of ideal as though that somehow should stand above fidelity to the truth. It's just such a striking moment in history where, you know, the, the people have this idea that, I mean, it started off, that, that it was so funny how, how much of this was broadcast, how loud the harbingers were mm -hmm. um, at the very beginning, right? When, when, when Spicer, I think it was, stood up in front of everybody and said, well, we've got some alternative facts. And that's like... That is that is that is like the theme song. That's the that's the that's the fucking that that's it. That's the undercurrent of the last four years, up until we got to this fucking plague. Right. And in the middle of a plague, in the middle of a plague, you've got an expert. You've got Fauci, or you've got uh, Deborah Burks, Bricks, Burks, standing in front of 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 the reporters, and they're trying to say, "Here are true things." And then moments later, they are contradicted. Be and 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 the conversations that you see on the ground level, at the Twitter level, at the Facebook level, at the neighbor down the street level, really reflect that idea that you know th there are more than one thing. Like that's well, that's your truth. Right. That's true for you. Um, that's not what I think is true. As if true is no longer objective and. They set a tone. Religion sets a tone that truth is something to believe first and then find out about later. And it primes us for exactly the disinformation crisis. We've been priming ourselves for this for 2,000 plus, 3,000 plus years. Mm -hmm. We just haven't had this kind of amplification technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, yeah. and we also haven't been in a position where... Um, uh, or, or rather, we put ourselves in a position where any even obvious solution is, you know, anathema to our to our, uh, like you said, to our uh, moral values, to our whole concept of what it is to be America. Uh, because, you know, like, come on, like anybody who's been in the skeptical movement for any amount of time has watched as efforts to advocate for critical thinking as a subject being taught in school on a regular basis crumbles time and time again, yep. because let's face it, because eventually people that, that leads to kids coming back and at home and saying, mom, I learned today that Jesus is nonsense. This is silly. It's everything. You know, it's all of these, it's all of these logical fallacies that they're teaching me about in school. Every single one of them like lined up in a row, like ducks, right? So you can't do that. You put yourself in that position one way or the other. And look, Tom, I mean, honestly, you're one of the first people I heard that was really advocating for this position. And it's not a popular one. And it's not one that I like to talk about much, given that I make my living by the fact that we can just say whatever the fuck we want on the Internet these days. <laughs> right. But if you wrote the novel 2020, right, with Donald Trump as president and the pandemic happening back in 1995 or something like that, you try to get it published, everyone would assume that it was a novel. It was a it was a, a, a allegory about the dangers of not having gatekeepers to your information. It would be about the dangers of giving everyone a yeah. voice in that way and, and, and having no check on 
on on just blatant bullshit, the dangers of allowing conspiracy theories to run rampant. And I, and I think we, because the honest truth is I don't think anybody would have published it then, right? Because we were so enamored of the internet and yeah. by all the wonders and glory when everyone had a voice and they, you know, and, and, and I'm not trying to shit on that. I think there's a lot of good that's come from that. I still, you know, everyone on this call is old enough to remember a time where when bad shit happened to you in the world, you had no goddamn recourse at all unless you want to be some crazy guy marching in front of yeah. a business with a, yeah. with a pamphlet or some shit that you wanted to give out, right? Yeah. So, you know, I'm not saying I want to go back to that way, but like the, that is clearly the lesson of 2020. And it's really hard for us to learn because we grew up in an era that just, you know, deified this, th this very concept that we would all have this voice to express our beliefs, no matter what kind of time cube shit we were selling. And <laughs> lo and behold, yeah. fast forward fucking 25 years and we've got Marjorie Taylor Greene in Congress. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it, it strikes me that we, you know, we just, to your point about not teaching critical thinking, the, the, the problem is that the technology outpaced the prerequisites. You know, the prerequisites for doing this well would have been to teach digital information literacy and critical thinking, skills which are absolutely essential to our continued well-being and skills which we are very much, to your point, specifically and intentionally not going to teach. Right. Yep. And religion is going to be a huge part of why we choose not to offer these critical skills to everybody that needs them. And the people that need them are literally everybody. It's not kids. Kids need them for sure. But, you know, if you look at like who shares the most misinformation, it's people 65 and older. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say one of the one of the things I was going to say, Tom, is that the, the thing is, is that the people who are doing the most misinformation are ones that think they know everything already. They think they already, they already think that they don't need to go to school. They're wise enough to, to know, but they're not wise enough to know how these things work. And so there's a real problem there, a real problem with the oldest people, the mm -hmm. 60, like you say, 65 plus. Well, and then it also trades in on this, just this weird, bizarre kind of a concept that we wound up with as a culture where it's, it's just it's rude to correct somebody if they're wrong, right? So it's it's rude to, it's it's more rude to correct misinformation than it is rude to spread misinformation, and that just seems like a doomed place to start from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't want to start a fight on somebody's Facebook wall right, about yeah. vaccines <laughs> when they're clearly saying that vaccines have a microchip or something and well, or some dumb shit. And yeah. and could this not be like again? This is just it. You know, it's like it's out of a fucking book, right? Because vaccines specifically have been for so long a litmus test for us as skeptics of, of, of can we win this fight? And, and, and that's been where we've been trying, because, you know, of all of the shit that these woo meisters do, the idea of bringing back old eradicated diseases like smallpox and polio, that's one of the most terrifying, right? Um, yeah. So that's sort of been our focus for so long. And now to see the final exam of whether the skeptical <laughs> world can get people yeah. on board with vaccines and to see how yeah. poorly we're doing from the gate, yeah. you know? It, well, there was there was a real problem though, and I saw this happen. There was people initially the moment the lockdown hit that you, if you look at Pew, right? You look at the the people who were asked. This is just regular old folk. They're all asked, "Will you? Would you take a vaccine for this?" It was in the seventies, high seventies when we were in lockdown, and then the problem was is Donald Trump mm -hmm. was. Put, trying to put his fucking name yep. on it. Just like he signed his name to our stimulus checks that were our money. It's the same fucking thing. He was trying to sign his name to this vaccine, trying to hurry the process, trying to, and he was, he was doing the things he always does, which is say vague statements. But the problem is, is when you say vague statements about a vaccine, it actually becomes foreboding rather than reinforcing. It sounds a little scary when you make vague statements about a vaccine. And so that's what was happening was he kept on saying these weird vague statements and everybody, could, and that number, Noah, dropped to about 45 to 50 percent mm -hmm. right around October when people were saying, I don't know if I would take a vaccine. Now, that number has since rebounded up to about 60, but 60 is not enough for herd immunity. It's got to get higher than that. And so the current administration really has to turn around their science education in order to really move this forward. Because if you don't, 
You're stuck in the Trump days where people weren't really sure if it was a good idea. Well, look, I mean, and you know, in, in those people's defense, if they had asked me in October, I think I probably would have said, eh, you know, I it agree. depends on when I it comes agree. out. I agree. Yeah. You know, they, he was like, yeah, he was actively saying, well, you know, we're going right. to we're going to just cheat it a little bit just, you know, for political purposes. I mean, not that. I mean, they, they yeah. told me to say, say not the opposite of that is what I meant. <laughs> um, I mean, that's, that's the one thing that I, I miss about Trump is he was too dumb to lie. He was. Right? He, was. So he, he was. He yeah. was unintentionally the most transparent yep. president we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We just didn't listen 100%. to him. We, yeah, we just, just didn't listen to him. Well, he's probably saying that to play some game. No, yeah. he's probably just saying yeah. that because he's, <laughs> he's, he's going to. The damn. problem, though, Muslims. genuinely is, is that that damaged. That damaged our outlook on it. It really yeah. did damage it. And it didn't bounce back to the pre to the lockdown pandemic levels. It hasn't bounced back there yet. Now, I hope that with more people getting vaccinated and with things opening up and with, as Tom said before, Tom said on our show before, you have to put some sort of incentive in there for people to get it who are on the fence, be that, you know, your work puts it in there or there's some sort of bonus or something for you, a travel, you're allowed to travel more freely, whatever that is. We need to make sure that there's some sort of incentive for people who are on the fence. And I think if you do that and then you just get the regular old folk who are like, yeah, cool, I'll get a fucking vaccine. I'm cool with that. Maybe we can get to that point where we actually have herd immunity, but he genuinely damaged it. And it's not just him because, you know, the, these, these religions were all spreading everything he had to say as if it were gospel. Well, and, and again, they, they've been primed to demonize precisely vaccines for so long. You know, that didn't yeah. necessarily start as a religious thing, but it's been incubated by yeah. religious, not not yeah. just by religious institutions. Uh, you know, this is it's big now uh, uh, in a lot of American Muslim communities and in a lot of evangelical communities, but also through religious exemptions to vaccine, right? Yes, That's yes. usually no, the vehicle that allows for it. Why the, do you know the history of that? Why the fuck are, are religious groups so keen specifically to demonize vaccines as opposed to antibiotics or I know that some do, but like my, the, the pushback against vaccines is so specific and broad and unique. And the idea that there is a specific exemption for the religious, which makes no sense. It's never, I mean, vaccines aren't in the Bible anywhere. Nope. It's a silly, fu it's fucking silly. And I don't understand the history there. Do you know that? Do you know why they have a fucking boner hate for fucking vaccines in this way? I don't know that there's an agreed upon answer to that. So if there is, I, I you know, I don't know it. I, I have a, a bit of a theory on it, which is, you know, because look, you know, one religion or another, as you said, there are people who demonize antibiotics. There are those wackaloons in Idaho that demonize all medicine. You got the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses demonizing blood transfusions, which, you know, that came up because there was that, uh, what, the convalescent plasma therapy or whatever it was that, yeah. uh, that the Jehovah's right. Witnesses yeah. said would not be acceptable under their religion. So I, I think virtually every medical practice of any kind has been demonized by some religion at some point somewhere. And I think that, you know, there's there's a lot of different reasons, right? It, one, of, one of them is simply being you know, jealousy, that's supposed to be, you know, curing disease is supposed to be their department, et cetera. Um, but I think with vaccines specifically, there's there's not as much downside or visible downside, you know, right? Like, so like people aren't afraid of getting polio. People aren't afraid of getting measles or mumps or rubella, right? So uh, I, I think of the various medicines that you can demonize, the two that are easiest to demonize without the consequence, the negative consequences being perfectly obvious immediately upon the demonization are vaccines and, you know, pre pre COVID are vaccines and psychiatric medicines. I see. I got you. So it gives them something to rally around like a demon. It gives them a common enemy mm -hmm. that has very low stakes for them to, I got, it. okay. That makes some sense. Cause I, I have, I'll, I'll be honest. I've never really understood where they arrived at choosing vaccines to draw this weird hate for. I've just, I've never really gotten that. I mean, it's, it's evident. It's all over the place. Religious fucking, they constantly have this fear that is different than any other medicine. I, I yeah. mean, it, it's so much more ubiquitous. It's not like, yeah, it's they, about the, yeah they're not like, oh my sure. God, you know, antibiotics, 
They got the devil inside them and microchips from Bill Gates inside your antibiotics. Nobody says that shit. Well, right, but but that's the thing though is that like the group that says, "Oh my God, the antibiotics," you know, their their legs start falling off and shit, and that group of people are like, mm, "Maybe the antibiotics are just fine." Yeah, antibiotics <laughs> are good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we're good. But, yeah. but you can go without vaccines, especially because of herd immunity, right? Like, yeah, and, herd and immunity that's helps. Why yep. They, they give a, the religious justification or the religious exemption right. to these that because they're like, you know, it doesn't matter if, yep. you know, this incredibly, yep. because up until recently, it's like, you know, it was like eight guys. It was like, it was uh, the, the, you know, there was one Muslim group and then there was some weird, uh, 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 whatever, Amish type group or something like that that didn't do vaccines. Up until very recently, it was just this incredibly small group of people where it's just like, okay, it's not worth browbeating you into doing it to go, you know, to let your kids go to school. Fine. If, if nine people don't get vaccinated, it's not going to make a big difference in the whole over wide, uh, overall vaccination process. Uh, but obviously, that's not sustainable. If, if the yeah. number grows, we, we can't keep doing that. And the numbers grow. Hey, I'm curious, man. How do you think our next pandemic's going to go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I will say, look, you know, the, the the I think the biggest problem that we had, other, you know, when you set aside religion and Donald Trump, the next biggest problem we had was lack of imagination. Uh, people can't imagine things happening until they happen. Uh, when when George W. Bush got the warnings that they were going to knock buildings down with airplanes and shit, he's like, come on, that's not a real, that's a thing out of a movie. That's not a thing that happens in real life. People can't imagine shit until it happens. At the very least, the next pandemic will have imagined it beforehand. That's fair. If it's a zombie thing, I am absolutely going to be shooting people well ahead of time. <laughs> like, remote, I am 100% trigger happy during that zombie thing. If it's a zombie thing, I'm going to show up and have you just shoot me. I'm just going to be like, Brains. I will tell you, I am not believing a single person who doesn't have, who, who says, no, I didn't get bit. Yep. I'm like, no, yeah. you just go ahead and shoot them in advance, you bet. right? Yep. Yeah, anybody who's, anybody who's wearing the, their armor like a little weird, like how you wear the mask now where it's below your nose, their, their pauldron is hanging below their shoulder. I'd be like, no, no, sorry, man, you're not wearing your armor right, you get shot. That's just how it works. No, I got to ask a question. So I know how thorough you are. Like we, we work together every week on Citation Needed. I know how thorough you are uh, when you research things uh, and especially when it comes to things like the Etruscans. I know how, how deeply <laughs> you research things. Mm-hmm. Were you surprised at all by religion? Was there, and, and I don't mean negatively, it could it be positively. Were you surprised at all by religion when you started doing this book or was there, you know, in the mountains of research that you went through or was there, was it all pretty much, yeah, I, I, I kind of guess that's how bad it would be. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to say that I still have the ability to be surprised by how awful he's been. <laughs> but, you know, like after, you know, we've been doing this for eight years yeah, now. You yeah. guys have been doing it for, what, 10 now, right? 10, yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you know, no. Like, it's, 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 as soon <laughs> no. as you go into it, you I know love, immediately. Not, not only do I not love, I love the nose, like, no. Yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> not. No. The absolutely of not. all the no's. Yeah. 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 I want to say, though, I got to say, you know, you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but that's a really good cover you got there. No, Pretty I say. sweet <laughs> fucking cover. I mean, it? really good cover. That's Excellent. really the best part of the best aspect of the entire book. I think. I, is the best cover. Act, how on earth did you get a cover so good? I mean, that cover is <laughs> really, you. You couldn't afford it, Cesar. I could very. <laughs> very could very, can very, you yeah. turn me on to who did it for you, though? Maybe yeah, I could no, see. No, it was it, it, it was it was actually um it was actually your wife who did it, and she. <laughs> Rock that she fucking rocked I'm just it. Push, I'm just and, pushing and pushing and pushing until he says it out loud. I know I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, and, and no, and I will say, like, I honestly, she did an awesome job with it. It was really cool. Loved the uh, the design and the color scheme and everything else. And we kept trying to pay her, and she wouldn't let us pay her. And <laughs> we were like, finally, we were like, Cecil, at least tell us like what kind of wine to send her or something, man. <laughs> But uh, yeah, she did. It was it was very awesome uh, of her to do, and it, it looks phenomenal. And it looks it honestly it, it, it makes it real obvious how bad a job I did on my other two books when I try to do that shit myself. So <laughs> might have to get her to do yeah, two more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's always nice when you edition. can feel a little shamed of yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Noah, where would people buy this book? I'm sure they, there's plenty of places to find it, but uh, tell them the name again and tell them where to buy it. Uh, so yeah, you can get it on Amazon. It's uh, and yes, unfortunately, it is an Amazon exclusive. So you have issue with Amazon. I I get it. I I don't blame you for having issues with them. But in terms of profitability for self publishing, 
They pretty much have that shit on lockdown. So uh, <laughs> the name of the book is Outbreak Crisis of Faith, How Religion Ruined Our Global Pandemic. Uh, and if you don't want to get it from me, get it for the very awesome uh, preface that my friend Andrew Torres wrote. Uh, he kind of gives you a very good breakdown of sort of how we how we got where we are vis-a-vis -vis religion from a legal uh, point of view. And I think it's really important to understand that, you know, going into the larger story. Uh, so, you know, and you know, that's, you get a free one of those with every purchase <laughs> and check out Noah's podcast. Of course, I'm sure everybody on our audience already listens to it, but scathing atheist, skeptocrat, God awful movies, D and D minus, and best of all, we also are joined every week. Uh, we all, we join forces for citation needed. So Noah, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about your book. Can't thanks. wait for the next one. Thanks for, uh, thanks for giving me the chance. The next pandemic. Yes. Or the next <laughs> book. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to be specific, do I? <laughs> He's not a big hug guy either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
a Swedish professor saying, you know, we can eat de- dead people, but that's not fast enough. So I think your next uh, campaign slogan has to be this. We got to start eating babies. We don't have enough time. There's too much CO2. All of you, you're, you, you know, you're a pollutant. Too much CO2. We have to start now, please. So we have to get rid of the babies. So this story comes from Inquisitor, but I saw it everywhere. Uh, former QAnon follower to Anderson Cooper. I apologize for thinking that you <laughs> ate babies. I love this so much. Jesus this is Christ. One of those, holy shit. So... What a weird so conversation, by the way. Yeah, um, let's, let's, that's, that's a weird. That is a weird mm. moment in therapy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a. It's like one of the. It's a very strange twelve step program to go to somebody and say, "I'm sorry, I thought you yeah. ate babies." You know, have you ever been wrong about somebody? Yeah. Like just like sure, just sure. straight up. You, you know, I was wrong about you. I, I years <laughs> ago, I was wrong about you. I can't. Imagine. I thought you were an asshole. I was right about well, you that. Were, you were but right I about that. I was. What was you I were right about? about that? I can't remember yeah, what I was wrong. I'm trying about. to think about what you were. I don't right know about. what I was wrong about. Anyway, I can't imagine thinking that somebody was like a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then like, being like this, whoopsie daisy, and then just being yeah. like, oh uh, man, I've eaten some shit before. Don't get me wrong. Like yeah. I've been wrong about people before, and I've had to apologize. I've had to be like, oh man. I I am in I'm the guy that's sorry, but I've never been Super like sorry. I thought you ate a baby. <laughs> I've never had to eat that kind of crow. Not even baby crow. No, no like, absolutely. If you eat that kind of baby, it's an ortolan, and you have to bury your <laughs> face. You have to hide your face. I like to get them when they're still in the shell, like those uh, duck eggs. What is oh, it? The um, uh, balut. 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 Yeah. 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 That's, oh, that's a that's a duck get abortion. Crow that's balut. <laughs> <laughs> Holy uh, shit. Th- this is a truly 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 bizarre. And I, and there's there's got to be these moments of reckoning for all the for not all of them but for some of the Q believers. The ones who and and this is one of those um doomsday moments, right? Where doomsday is going to happen on yeah, it's August Herald 15th. Camping. Herald right? camping. Yeah. And there's going to be some people who just move the goalposts and double down, right? That is they intellectually for whatever reason, emotionally, psychologically, whatever it is, they cannot they can't bring themselves it. to reevaluate yeah, their worldview. It. It's just it's so much psychological damage. Just what they just won't do it. But then there's a huge number of other people who are going to be like, "Oh man, oh," and and I have to think, Cecil, that there's a ripple effect to that, right? Because it's not just one thing you were wrong about; it's like a whole worldview you were wrong about. Yeah. yeah. So there's going to be that time when you're like in the grocery store, pushing your cart and your brain is just kind of in the fucking background. You're like, Oh, I was wrong about that too. Yeah. Oh, it's going to go on for yeah. a long time. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's, it reminds me of that, that, uh, uh, that getting rid of God or good. Oh, I forget what it is. So what is it? Good. Something getting rid of God or something. I, I mentioned it a couple of times. It's Julius yeah. Sweeney's book and it's uh, letting go of God, I think is what it's called. And there's a moment where she's walking from her shed to her house and she says, and I didn't, and, and I just sort of struck me that God didn't exist, but then she's, she also sort of had to sit down because she wasn't sure how gravity even worked without God. And yeah, then she- everything is just mushed together. Right, and then she stopped and said, well, of course gravity works because of this and this and this and this. But she literally for a moment was like, why don't we just fly off into space? I don't understand how this- Everything, the entire fabric of her life was woven together by God. And so the same thing happens here. How many things, how many pieces of your life are balancing on cue? How many pieces of your life are now affected by this, right? Because there's so many aspects to the Q belief, the Q and right, non-belief. Yeah. There's so many, so many tendrils that shoot out. And what's crazy is, is that even this guy didn't believe all of them. When you t- when you read through the story, there's parts of the story where the guy said, yeah, I didn't, I, it's kind of a pixie choosy belief. And he didn't believe all of them. He left some of them and he chose others. And like, the Q thing is not dissimilar. I think it's. I think you hit it on the head. The Q thing is not dissimilar to, to religion in that it seeks to have a unified explanation yeah. for everything. For everything. And when, when you throw that away, people are going to be walking around there and be like, wait a minute. It's not just that the Democrats didn't eat babies. It's that there's no such thing as a deep state. Yeah. And the EPA is just 
people that are scientists who wake up and kiss their you know spouse and go to work, and they're not like an evil cabal. Yeah. Yeah. And their their whole idea of how the world works and how decisions are made and how power is structured, all of that totally upended. Yeah. But this one perfect Anderson Cooper moment is just, I got to read it. Sure. I got to read it. CNN anchor Anderson Cooper recently interviewed Jitarth Judea. I, I'm probably mispronouncing that. A former QAnon supporter who earnestly believed in some of the most, most absurd conspiracy theories peddled by the mysterious Q. Uh, according to a clip of the interview released on Saturday, Judeha apologized to Cooper for once thinking he ate babies. Did you at the time believe that Democrats, high-level Democrats and celebrities were worshiping Satan, drinking the blood of children? Yes, I did, Jadatha replied, noting that many QAnon followers believe that, although some think that Anderson Cooper is actually a robot. <laughs> so there's a like a really amusing aside because that assumes that robots eat babies? <laughs> Which is, but fucking why? Just because somebody programmed a ago, robot to eat babies? Years ago, we did a story where that robots that ate organic material were powered by it. Yes, Remember this? And yes, the, I do. And it was, and it was Rick Wiles, I guess. I think, I think it was yeah, Rick it was. Wiles who was terrified yep. that organic eating robots were going to come and climb into his bed and eat him or whatever. And so this is just an extension of that, Tom. They just eat organic material. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. He, just an extension of that. Just why would you? I don't know, he man. Said, he said to him, Anderson, I thought you did that. And I would like to apologize for that right now. So I apologize for thinking that you ate babies. If, if you're Anderson Cooper, what are you thinking? Like you thought I was a baby eating Satan worshiping robot. Could you imagine if somebody came up to you, Tom, and said, hey, man, I, I'm sorry. I thought you were uh, a child rapist. I apologize. I don't know that I could talk to that person. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I could, I could accept that apology. I don't think I'd accept it. Not only could I not yeah. accept it, I don't know that I wouldn't jaw that person. Right. Right? Yeah. I don't know that I would be like, holy shit, you thought I what? Yeah. Like you think so lit, like you think I'm capable of this monstrous shit? Yeah. You don't even like, know me. It's outrageous. I'm just, a I'm just a silver fox on TV. That's all I am. <laughs> and you think I eat babies. That's the, I mean, genuinely. And like, like this isn't a joke, man. This no. isn't a joke. This right. isn't some guy who's, who thought, ha ha ha, you had babies. No, this is, guys, I mean, trigger warning, but genuinely, these are people who think other human beings eat other human baby human beings. Yep. That's what they, they think that for real. They think that's not half a, that's the not a, country's a power structure. Yeah. They think half the country's power structure plus the media plus, plus, plus. They think a huge number of people, a yes. massive number of really yes. powerful, important people are, are, are consuming children and building CNN anchor robots. Yeah, and not just consuming them, murdering them, raping them, torturing right. them, yeah. drinking their blood, trafficking them all over the country. This is, it's, it's 100%. This is, the, they really genuinely believe this. This isn't a joke. It's not, it's not funny because there's nothing, there's no joke. There's no punchline. There's no punchline. And it's, it's worse than that because it's not a, like Q initially when we first started talking about it, Cecil, it was funny because it yeah. was so absurd. But now sure. Q has become a motivating, Q has become a factor. Q has become, an, yes. uh, ironically, the X factor. Like yeah. It, yeah. We, we have a, <laughs> we have a guy factor. who says, the same guy being interviewed, said that he believed the people behind him were actually a group of fifth dimensional, intradimensional, extraterrestrial, bipedal bird aliens called blue alien. I, I, I don't even have any idea what that sentence I just read could possibly mean. But I do know that a group of those people stormed the fucking Capitol. Yeah, yeah. That, that 75 million people turned out to vote for Trump and a not small number of them believe some element of this. This should be disqualifying. This is in the millions. millions. It's yeah. not a small group of people. Right. It's, a, it's a large group of people. As an aside, Tom, you know what you call a bird alien from space? Uh, what? A Millennium Falcon. Come oh! on. Oh! 
Don't that's be so good. That's so good. <laughs> that's so good. It's a millennial. Fa- is it a millennium Mill- yeah. falcon? I guess it would be a millennial falcon. Yeah. <laughs> well, those it don't doesn't count. Vote. <laughs> it doesn't vote. Doesn't vote. I, I want to say though. I want to say though that you know you're right. When we first started talking about this, it was ha ha funny. Yeah. And it was ha ha funny because it was one guy. But you have to put yourself in this guy's head. Just, I know it hurts, right? It hurts your brain to put your head in there for a second. But Liz Crokin is earnest, right? She is earnest yeah. when yeah. she says that she thinks there are people who are murdering children and eating them. She is earnest. She's not lying yeah. to you. She thinks it, yep. right? And yeah. if she doesn't think it, she's convincing other people to think it for money. Yeah. So it's not yep. any better. Yeah, think about how earnest that guy who stormed pizza, the the, the common yes. pizza place was. Yes. That guy was willing to literally put his life on the line to yes. protect what he thought were children. Be. Like, he thought he was fucking temple of dooming that shit. You know what yeah. I mean? He thought he was going to bust into that place and a whole bunch of fucking kids were going to come pouring out and fucking yeah. Kali Ma Shakti Dang all the fucking yeah. kids out of there. Absolutely. Like, that's what he thought was going to happen. <laughs> There's one guy just pulling hearts out and putting on pizzas <laughs> just the whole time. He's just pulling hearts out of he people. He sees that guy running Shakti with a gun. Day. He starts pulling them out faster. Just like, <laughs> but I got to get them all out of there. <laughs> that, as, he, as he does it, the boulder starts coming down and these boulders rolling at him. <laughs> These people have been taught that their government is now in control by, you know, Satan worshiping, baby eating robots and bipedal bird alien things. Like we, we, the, we you, we, we cannot come back from this very easily. No, because there's I agree. there those things that I just said should sound so disqualifyingly farcical, but they don't. They don't sound disqualifyingly farcical to an amazing number of people. Um, of and people. we've never seen that before. We've yeah. never seen the crazies be able to aggregate together and then like have a leadership structure. And, and it's not that they're crazy. I think that there's a lot of really just like genuinely uninformed uneducated people out there. Like and just th- massively uninformed. And I think it's genuinely been since the beginning pulling at their heartstrings. Yeah. That's why there's so many people on the anti-vax train because it's it, they want to protect children, right? right? We talked about this with Marsh yep. in the past. There's this there's this idea that you want to protect children. The children are the ones who are going to be they're going to get sick from it because there's two different types of va- anti-vaxxers. There's no vaccines at all, but then there's also the people out there that are say, "Well, that's too many." too soon, mm-hmm. right? There's the too many too soon vaxxers. They're just as much anti-vaxxers as everybody else because they're still spreading disinformation that has no bearing on vaccines whatsoever. Right. But they there's a couple of different groups. But if you notice, they're all going after children. They want to make sure that they protect all children all the time. They're constantly doing that. Yep. And the same thing is here. That's what that's what gets people on board. They, you know, they're either fathers or mothers or they're, you know, they have nieces or nephews or whatever. And they're thinking to themselves, they're just being empathetic. Holy shit. Are you being serious when you say somebody is genuinely eating a child? Like they're torturing and eating a child and other people are that they trust are saying right. yes. Yeah. And then and yep. then they're just being empathetic. And I don't want to excuse anybody's misinformation or following this misinformation. They they should really genuinely come to a, you know, sort of figure this shit out because this, this is super dangerous. But I, at the same time, I want to recognize that those people are acting off empathy. Yeah. And that's what they're being, that's what's being tuned up. And I think that's part of what's going to make this so difficult to wind back down. Yeah. You know, because you, you have to get people who cared so deeply. We taught like the power structures, important religious and political power figures in their lives taught them that these things were happening, wound them up and said, there's a crisis going on. And it's yeah. really, and they never had any evidence of the crisis before. So they're still going to think there's a crisis. Maybe they're going to think that the actors changed or that somebody different is responsible. But in their yeah. mind, there's still going to be, well, what do we do about the pedophiles then? If it's not this, then how do we solve this problem? You sold me that there was this problem. So if it's a different solution set, fine. But the problem remains. It's We're, we're in a tight spot when we think yeah. that fucking bird aliens from the fifth dimension is not such a crazy thing that should be disqualifying. But none of these things apply to the case of Mother Teresa because it's a, a simple matter of record that she was a fanatic and a fundamentalist and a fraud. 
I think probably the most the most successful confidence trickster of the last century um, and responsible for innumerable deaths and for un untold suffering and misery and proud of it. Um, do, should I just assert this or would you require any proof? <laughs> well, so here's an uplifting we didn't really have story? an uplifting story this week, Tom. Go to the go to the stream and you can go do get us catch us talk doing get some talkies, funny stuff. These are not these little, are not, little rough. This isn't funny. This you know, isn't funny. A little rough. God, this just reading the title funny. of this one is tough. Uh, German nuns sold orphan children to sexual predators, according to Wouldn't a report. You just, I don't. Hold on a second. Yeah. Why would you sell them? Wouldn't you just transfer them to a different section of the church? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> When they talk about this, they talk about how uh, how they sold them to priests and businessmen. And I think when you sell it to priests, isn't that just taking like money from your back pocket and putting it in your front pocket? I, I don't even understand you. how that works. Yeah. So uh, this is it's just it's just awful. It's just yeah. awful. It's the report is the byproduct of a lawsuit, um, and it's talking specifically about um, orphan boys living in a nunnery, like it, with this this sis this sisterhood of nuns, and they. They fucking sold these kids and they fucking rented them out as as sex slaves yes. to predators um, who were in in and it's just it's it's as awful as everything else that you've ever read and it and I mean I know we talked about this before but I just think it bears repeating as many times as it fucking happens right if you're looking for the pedophile sex ring you need look no further. Uh, international uh, pedophile sex ring. Uh, international. Is there a country that the Catholic Church operates in? And I, I ask this without being facetious. Is there a country that the Catholic Church operates in that has not had a massive, disgusting, horrible moral violation? I mean, we covered a story about the Catholic Church in Ireland and their mother and child homes like a week or two ago. We've covered a million stories here in the States um, of, of child sex abuse and the systematic cover-up of yeah. that abuse. Um, we've covered it in Australia when that motherfucker got uh, convicted and then his conviction later overturned for turning a blind eye to the systematic child yes. abuse. This is Germany. We've seen it all yes. over South America. They, they, this is not like a few bad apples, Yeah, right? This is not a few bad apples. And I'll just say like, if... You have a few bad apples that are this bad. The batch is fucking ruined. Close up yeah. shop. Yeah. There's Why no are we allowing this church to continue? Why are we pretending that this is not anything other than a disgusting, foul organization that should be raised to the fucking ground and the earth salted over? Here's, here's what you got to understand. This is calculated, right? Yeah. This stuff is coming out. Uh, one of the things that says here, the survey also found that 80% of the abusers are now dead and 37 had left the priest, the, the religious order. So they're waiting until these people die or they're out of their order. So there's no, there's, I mean, they're no wait, they're, if they're waiting that long, they're, they're waiting how long for these other people? These are, this is calculated release, man. This is, this again, showing you the evils of this organization. This isn't, and they, and again, they even blame it. Listen to this. They say the report finds that 175 people, mostly boys between the ages of eight to 14, were abused over two decades. It failed to blame the nuns directly, instead saying systemic management errors and leniency. What is that? Sister systemic management and sister leniency with yeah, those two different right? nuns? For those uh, who were accused by the children enabled the abuse to continue. So it was leniency for those who were accused and systemic management errors, Tom. Management ever, errors? Tom, you're in management. Have you ever had a management error where somebody accidentally got raped? Gee, a management error is like, oh man, I didn't get my report in on time. Or, right. you know, holy cow, I I, I didn't realize that, uh, you know, reviews are coming up in a week sure. and I'm yeah. unprepared to evaluate. Management error. It's not a management error. This 560 page report names various German businessmen and complicit clergy who rented the boys specifically for gangbangs and orgies that these boys were forced to participate in. And they were when they were returned to the convent, they were beaten if their clothes were wrinkled and covered in semen. That's not a management management error. Well, I, I think, you know, obviously uh, your um, TPS reports, uh, not yeah, in right. order. 
Also, you're covered in semen from being rented out as a young age to sexual predators. So what? how is that a fucking management error? How is that leniency? I what, don't get it. What, what are you lenient about? What, I don't get who's it. Who's lenient to sexual predators? That's the, what? The Catholics are. The Catholics are super lenient to sexual predators. It, it, it boggles my mind that this continues to happen and we keep getting more and more reports and then nothing seems to happen. Or, yeah. you know, and if stuff does happen, it's, it's, it's a tiny bit of money way too late, right? You basically sold out you fucking, you basically get paid for your PTSD later on in life. Yeah. That's what you get paid for. And, and not a lot of money either, guys. They don't get like, it's not like they're walking around with a, a fucking 12th century Pope hat that's worth <laughs> 6 million. Yeah. They get, you know, twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for PTSD that they get to spend the rest of their life fucked up by. I, I would not call this, I would not say that justice was served until these motherfuckers were in prison and they yeah. sold everything down to the last fucking papal ring investment yeah. to pay yeah. these fucking people. To pay these people. That's yep. it. They should yeah. bankrupt the fucking church. The Vatican should be sold. Sell the fucking thing for condos. I don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah. The whole thing. At the, you, there's no justification for the continuation of this Nothing. organization. It's Nothing. gotta go. I want to thank our newest patrons, Ken, Dylan. The Etruscans episode finally broke the curse, and now I can open the Patreon website without en with any computer door. <laughs> That's a long name. That's that a, is long a long name. Patreon name. Cheryl, wow. Jordan, Adam, and the people who up their pledges, Christopher, Robert, and Bill. Thank you so much for your generous donations. We really do truly appreciate it. Uh, Glorial Studios exists because of your generous donations. So we want to thank you so much, everybody who puts in, who chips in, uh, to make it happen. So thank you so much. And the, and the counter to that is Glory Hole Studios would not exist without yeah. patrons. So, you know, yeah. if you like Glory Hole Studios and what it produces, I don't know, maybe you should be a patron. Give it a whirl. <laughs> You'd like it. Tom. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Only one, only one person <laughs> sent this into us. Only one okay. person talked about this at all. Okay. It's a weird, it's all a weird right. catch. Uh, only wow. one person out of everybody online, <laughs> on, so much. on all the social media, on our email, uh, on our, on our multiple different channels. Only one person right. caught this. So I'm going to read their name okay. right. This is Kristen. Congratulations, Kristen. You're the only yeah, one who caught it. this. Nobody else. PG and E yeah. is a major electric company in California. And it's not Procter, Procter and Gamble. Tom, I know it's a tiny Man. little piece of last show. Right. But my goodness, Kristen, you're the only one to catch that. <laughs> that amazing. Let me just raise my hand, guys. I made a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I just was reading Moving quickly. On. Moving on. Yeah. It had no substance. It was no does substance. It like the change yeah. on anything. It doesn't make her make it any different if she was talking about. PG&E or I mean like it could have been French's mustard. It starts from a little more plausible place if it's PG&E than it is Procter and Gamble, but not much. Yeah. So I mean, she's blaming fucking Feinstein at the end of it, folks. Yeah, there's okay. Rock children she involved the, and yeah. lasers from space and like it, get the fuck out. It doesn't out. matter yeah. how many fucking degrees of of Kevin Bacon you are away, it's still crazy. But I okay? I, I, I was wrong. So let me let me say it. I was wrong. I saw the PG and I just, I was reading quick and I, I never heard of PG and E because I'm not from California. So I just, my brain was like, Procter and Gamble. Eh, what are you going to do? I made a mistake. It's okay, Tom. I forgive you. <laughs> you know what, Cecil? I forgive <laughs> the shit out of you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got a bunch of messages. A couple of people on Twitter sent us messages and uh, John sent a message and said that uh, MTG's uh, Democratic opponent had really bad luck, wound up leaving the Democratic Party uh, because they moved out of state, were getting a divorce. There might have been, I saw a, a, an article that was sent to us that it looked like the QAnon people were making their life a living hell. So God. they might have even gotten death threats. So the reason why she was unopposed was because of all of the bad shit that happened to this guy and he left during the middle of a race. Not to say he'd have won because it is Georgia and you don't know that. I don't know how democratic or not that little area of Georgia is that she represents. Well, so, but, but it's Georgia. I, I actually, I, I listened to a, uh, another podcast, uh, a news podcast earlier this week. And they did say that um, MTG was originally going to run 
in a kind of where she used to live, which would be, it was an affluent um, suburb um, uh, uh, of Atlanta. And then somebody else uh, dropped out of the race or died in a much, much more conservative district. And she actually picked up her shit and moved her home yeah. to yeah, a she, more she conservative a district. Yeah. 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 At the, yeah. yeah. Just, just to, just to run someplace where she'd have a higher chance yeah. of winning. And she's rich, so she can do that. Right. Well, and, yeah. and you know, I just want to say too, that shouldn't be fucking allowed. There should be yeah. fucking residency requirements that have some fucking time attached to them. Yeah. Right. There should be yeah. a, a length of residency requirement. If you want to be a, a Chicago school teacher or you know, like in a lot of places, if you want to, uh, if there's a requirement for residency, you have to be a resident for a certain period of time. I would think to represent a fucking district, you shouldn't be able to just notice an opportunity yeah. and move there. Got a message from Michelle on Patreon, and she says, uh, "This is hugely this this is hugely offensive and upsetting reporting by these QAnon people. Everyone knows that Frazzle Drip is what was really leaking from Rudy Giuliani's head." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I love that shit. That's good shit. We also got a couple of images of Jewish space lasers that I'm going to put on this week's show. <laughs> They're notes. so one good. One from Kernan, one from Kernan, and one from Vice Rhino. So fucking good. The fucking one from Vice Rhino. I love so it. It's like a fucking meme inside a meme inside a meme. It's genius. It's so good. The one that uh, the one that Kernan sent also very good. We're gonna put them on this week's show notes. Check it out. It's uh, episode five sixty three. Uh, we got a message from Tony, and Tony was also letting us know about the uh, PG and E thing. And he said, "Hey guys, this is in the latest episode." And you were talking about Representative Taylor Green believing that California wildfires were caused by Jewish space lasers. Now, I know it sounds far-fetched, but the story is somewhat true. I live in Santa Cruz, and I saw the space lasers that started the complex fire that happened here. Some people call these space lasers lightning. (laughs) (laughs) I love... You got me. You drew me in. That's good. You drew me in. You had me in the first half, Tony. You had me in the first half. It was very good. It was very good. Uh... So last week, uh, we got a bunch of messages on YouTube, on Facebook, and uh, to our to our personal message. Uh, we made some uh, fat-shaming jokes about Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and uh, and we just wanted to apologize if anybody felt bad about the, themselves when they heard those jokes. We, we know that this was not a... We were trying to... We, we don't like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and we, we said some, some bad things about her, but we recognize that there's other things we could have said that would have been more relevant. And we're sorry if we hurt anybody's feelings with those jokes. Yeah, certainly. I just want to echo that. The, the intention was not to, um, so the, the intention was not to do anything other than take what were admittedly cheap pot shots at Sarah Huckabee Sanders entirely in jest. Um, and if, if those came across and hurt anybody, um, I, I am sorry. Our goal is not to hurt anybody or any yeah. of our listeners. And to the yeah. extent that that was inappropriate, um, I apologize. All right. Well, we want to thank Noah Illusions for joining us. Uh, Noah has a bunch of podcasts that you probably already know about. You can check the show notes for all of them. But the most important one, of course, Citation Needed. He joins us every week for that. And uh, we have a blast hanging out with Noah every week doing that show. Uh, You can also check out his many other podcasts and his book, Outbreak, A Crisis of Faith, with an amazing cover on it, I want to say, (laughs) by the way. Just an amazing cover on that book um, by a very talented artist. Uh, I just wanted to say that again. Uh, But Noah is an excellent writer. You hear him write every week, his diatribe every week. You know how good a writer he is. So check his book out. Go give it a go give it a buy. I even saw at one point that Kindle Unlimited is giving it away as one of the Kindle Unlimited books for a little while. So you could go get it under on your Kindle Unlimited if you have that uh, set up. Uh, but uh, but anyway, check it out. Uh, no illusions, friend of the show for many years, and uh, and you should check out his book if you get a chance. That is going to wrap it up for this week. Remember to join us every week for our live streams. Uh, we do live streams on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you can catch out those catch those live streams after they happen, but of course you can catch them live 9 p.m. Central, uh, and we do them for about an hour. Well, come hang out with us. Come hang out with the community that has uh, gathered around these, these live streams and they have a good time and they love to chat and uh, we sometimes interact with that chat. So check it out. But, uh, but we're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. 
couched in scientician double bubble toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative acupunctuating pressurized stereogram pyramidal free energy healing water downward spiral brain dead pan sales pitch late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, Cancer Cures, Detox, Reflex, Foot Massage, Death in Towers, Tarot Cars, Psychic Healing, Crystal Balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, Aliens, Churches, Mosques, and Synagogues, Temples, Dragons, Giant Worms, Atlantis, Dolphins, Truthers, Birthers, Witches, Wizards, Vaccine Nuts, Shaman Healers, Evangelists, Conspiracy, Double Speak, Stigmata, Nonsense. Expose Your Signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information, and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.